All right, this is uh, a video that should help you with 6.5, which is about finding the average value of a function. So to start with, we're going to look at a graphical representation of a couple different functions. First of all, we've got a linear function, um, f on the left, and we've got uh, a curved function on the right. So if you had a linear function like f over here, then uh, its average value on this closed interval from 0 to 5, if we just focus on that part, um, since it grows at a constant rate, it spends the same amount of time having a value of 1 as it does 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and so on. And so therefore its average value would just be exactly halfway between its highest point and its lowest point. So if it ends at 6, starts at 0, um, average value of that function then would be 3. Okay, right here. Alright, now if we look at geometrically the significance of that average value height or that average value line there, the rectangle that has a height of this average value, okay, over that closed interval, so the width is, you know, fixed 0 to 5 there, okay, the rectangle that has that height has the exact same area as the area that the original function f would have underneath it. So if you were to compare the area of this triangle that's underneath function f on the interval 0 to 5, compare that to the rectangle that we, uh, that we found for where the average, average value of the function would be, uh, those two have the exact same area. Okay, so the the height of the rectangle that has the same area as the function has underneath it, um, that height is the function's average value on that closed interval. Alright, we compare that to one that's curved, like function g over here. Alright, function g spends a lot more time, you know, down here between 0 and 1 than it does uh, above that. So its average value, even though it goes all the way up to 6, starts at 0, goes to 6, its average value is not going to be anywhere close to 3 because it, um, it, it's, yeah, it spends a lot more time down here than it does above 3. So if we were to look at the area underneath function g and kind of estimate, okay, well, that little amount of area that's underneath function g down here, okay, uh, how big would the rectangle uh, a rectangle that goes from 0 to 5, how high would it need to be in order to have about the same area as as that uh, area under the curve has. And so we would probably only need to maybe go up into this area somewhere maybe between 1 and 2 I would guess. Okay, so um, just enough so that this area that we're um, overestimating on this side is about the same as the area that we're underestimating on this side. Okay, so the average value of function g would be a lot closer to 1 or 2 or in between there um, as opposed to an average value of 3 just because of the, the shape. Okay, um, So again, height, whatever the height of this rectangle is, that would be the average value of function g. Um, and that height is uh, the height that's necessary to make this rectangle have the, the same area as the original curve shape under function g. All right, so algebraically what that means is we have, uh, we know that the area under either one of these functions, area under f or area under g, uh, let's do g for example, would be written like this. Okay. And we also know that that would be, um, according to what we're saying, what I'm telling you about average value of a function, that that area under the curve needs to be equal to the area of this rectangle right here. Okay, so I'm just going to label that as rectangle height times rectangle width. However, in this case, we know the exact width of the rectangle already because we were given this closed interval 0 to 5. Okay, so the rectangle width is actually 5. We know that already. Okay, so uh, we're also saying that this rectangle height that we have here is the same thing as the average value of g on that closed interval 0 to 5. So if we do a little bit of work here, 
in the solving. Okay, we just divide by five. We get our rectangle height, which is the average value of function g. Okay, um, so we use this little subscript um, g with a little ave subscript is uh, the notation we use for um, average value of a function, average value function g. All right, so we can find the average value of a function by solving for the height of the rectangle that we would need to have uh, in order to equal this area under the curve. All right, so we just basically all we're doing is taking the area under the curve, we're gonna divide by the width or divide by how wide it is, and that'll tell us the average value of the function or in other words, the rectangle's height. All right, so if you want your uh, notes to look like the book, they would write it like this. Okay, so average value of a function, you can take the integral of that function on whatever closed interval you need to, a to b, and then uh, divide by how wide that interval is. So in this case, um, b minus one divided by b minus a. That's um, that's like the dividing by five that we did up here. And b minus a is the width of the rectangle. So you're dividing the total area by that. All right. Let's look at an example using an actual function here. All right. So if we were trying to find the average value of this function, two x divided by one plus x squared squared, um, on the interval zero to two. Uh, we would start off by just simply setting up um, our formula. So the average value of g would be 1 over 2, because my width of this particular closed interval is going to go from 0 to 2. So I can write it as 2 minus 0, but that's just 1 half. Okay? And then <clears throat> our integral would go from 0 to 2 of this function. And so now all I need to do is find the value of this integral, divide it by 2, and that's the average value of function g. Um, so obviously you could use your calculator to do that. Um, I'm going to run through the algebraic method here just so we get a little brush up on our substitution and integration a little bit. So if I was integrating this by hand, um, I would have to use substitution. I would have that for u and du. Um, du can then go in for 2x and dx, because that's what it equals. And then u can go in for 1 plus x squared. So rewriting this in terms of u, we would have <clears throat> 1 over u squared du. Okay, and I would still have this one half out front. Okay, and that would be the same thing as. Uh, I should also change my limits of integration. I guess I'm going instead of zero to two. If I plug zero in here, that would now be one. If I plug two in here, that would be five. So I'd be going from one to five now. Okay, change that to u to the negative second. So I can use my antiderivative power rule, and we get one half times the antiderivative of u to the negative second. So it'd be u to the negative first divided by negative one, and we would need to evaluate that from one to five. Okay, and that would become 5 to the negative first, that's the same thing as 1 fifth, divided by negative 1, so negative 1 fifth, and I plug in 1, 1 over negative 1 would be negative 1. Okay, so negative 1 fifth plus 1 is 4 fifths. And I'm times that by half. So instead of four fifths, it would end up being two fifths. Okay? 
So two fifths would be the average value of function g on that closed interval. All right, we also should talk a little bit about the mean value theorem for integrals because uh, this is probably one of the main applications of kind of an extension of just finding the average value. The mean value theorem for integrals is a lot like the mean value theorem for derivatives. It just says that um, if you have a continuous function on a closed interval, there will be a particular point or particular x value on that closed interval where your function actually reaches its average value. So looking back at these graphs back here, that means that wherever this average value height it is, that your function will actually reach that height at some point on the closed interval that you're talking about. Um, so let's just use the same function that we um, used on the last example. Um, we already know that the average value of this function uh, on the interval 0 to 2 was 2 fifths. Okay, we found that on the work we just did. Okay, and uh, so if the average value of g is 2 fifths, what the mean value theorem is saying that we should be able to figure out exactly what x coordinate, which is our c value, what x coordinate that average value occurs. Okay, so we would just simply take um, the original function. I'm going to put c in the place of the x's just to follow the notation, standard notation. We're solving for a special x value called c. That is where the average value occurs. Okay, so that has to equal two-fifths at some point. The question is where. So if we solve this, um, I'm going to cross multiply. That give me 10c. And on the other side, we'd have this. Okay. And um, this is going to turn into a fourth degree if we square this out and distribute by 2, we're going to end up with 2 plus, instead of 2c squared, it would be 4c squared. And then in c to the fourth at the end would be 2c to the fourth. Okay, so I would probably um, solve that on your calculator, but I would probably make it equal to 0 first. So if we rewrote this as 2c to the fourth plus 4c squared minus 10c plus 2, just to kind of put things in descending order. Um, so you would just type that in the calculator, see where it crosses the x-axis. Move that up a little bit there. All right, and what you should end up getting is 0 0.220 and 1.207. All right, so what that means is the original function g that we had here uh, reaches its average value on the interval 0 to 2, which the average value is 2 fifths, or 0.4. Um, it reaches that average value twice on the interval 0 to 2. So um, we will look at some other special cases of the average value of a function um, later, but that should get you going on your homework.